Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture in our series on IFRS 13. Today we will be covering an important concept in IFRS 13 that is the hierarchical approach to determining inputs for calculating fair value. This is crucial because when you are calculating fair value you need to know what inputs you can and should use. See, fair value is a market based measure, not an entity specific one. Therefore, valuation techniques used to measure fair value maximizes the use of relevant observable inputs and minimizes the use of unobservable inputs. The hierarchical approach in IFRS 13 guides us through the process. All right. Let's dive deeper into the hierarchical approach that IFRS 13 introduces for determining fair value. This section is crucial because it explains the level of input you should use when calculating fair value. Let's break it down step by step. There are three levels of hierarchical approach that we need to discuss. Level one is the quoted price in active markets. The first level and the most reliable level is the quoted price in the active markets. The first preference is always for observable inputs. These are inputs that are derived from market data and are readily available for everyone to see. IFRS 13 emphasizes that whenever possible, you should use the price of an asset or liability that is currently being traded in the active market. This price is observable and independent, making it the best indicator of fair value. Let's say you own shares in a public company and you need to calculate their fair value. The simplest and the most accurate method is to look up the current price of those shares on an active stock exchange like the Pakistan Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange. This price is readily available, transparent and reflects the most recent market transaction. For example, if the current trading price of the share is $100 and you own 100 shares, the fair value of your share is simply $100 each into 100 shares is equal to $10,000. This is clear and a straightforward application of level one inputs. But what happens if you cannot find a quoted price for your specific asset or liability? This is where level two comes into play. In this level, you use adjusted quoted price. You start with the price of a similar asset or liability that is traded in an active market and then you adjust that price to account for differences. For example, imagine you own a shares in a private company which does not have a publicly traded stock price. However, there is a public company in the same industry with similar operations. You could start with the share price of this public company and then adjust it based on differences between the two companies. For instance, if the public company has a better market share, you might reduce the price when applying it to your private company's share. On the other hand, if your private company has better profitability, you might increase the price. For example, let's assume that the public company shares are trading at $50 per share, but your private company has higher risk due to more debt. You might reduce the price by 10% giving you an adjusted quoted price of $45 per share. And if you own 100 shares, their fair value would be $45 per share into 100 shares is equals to $4,500. This approach is less precise than level one because it involves some subjectivity in the adjustments. And finally, if neither level one no level two inputs are available. You turn to level three, 
which relies on unobservable inputs. This level involves using your own data, using your own assumption, often based on models like the present value of future cash flows. Consider a situation where you own a piece of land in a remote area with no comparable sales data. In this case, you might estimate the fair value based on the expected future income from developing the land. For example, if you anticipate that developing the land will generate $10,000 per year for the next 10 years and you discount these cash flows at appropriate discount rate, the present value of these cash flows would represent the fair value. However, because these inputs are based on your own assumption and not the observable market data, they are less reliable and more subjective which is why they fall under level 3. The goal of this hierarchical approach is to use as many observable inputs as possible. Observable inputs are preferred because they are market specific and independent, meaning they reflect actual market transactions and not influenced by the entity's own judgments, entity's own assumptions. Unobservable inputs, on the other hand, are specific to entity and can vary greatly depending on the assumptions made by that entity. That's why we aim to minimize their use and maximize the use of observable input that everyone can see and agree upon. With that, we have covered the core concepts of IFRS 13. Understanding this hierarchical approach is crucial for ensuring that your fair value calculations are grounded in reality and reflect the market as closely as possible. So to sum up, this hierarchical approach in IFRS 13 is all about maximizing the use of observable inputs to calculate fair value. You start with the most reliable data that is quoted price in active market level 1. If that's not available, you move to adjusted quoted price level 2. And only if those are not available, you rely on your own assumptions and models that is level 3. Understanding and applying this hierarchy correctly is key to accurately determine fair value in financial reporting. Make sure you review these concepts thoroughly as they are critical for your understanding of IFRS 13 and will definitely come up in exams and practical applications. Thank you for your attention throughout the lecture.